I'm a head of school. My job is to ensure human flourishing. I want students to look past obstacles, to spread their wings, the wings that will help them fly. Schools should be places where you build up confidence. You find out who you are, what you can do, and you go. But we have a problem in schools. We have a big problem. And it's the way that we assess students. And that's what I'm going to talk about. But I'm not just going to talk about this problem. I'm going to tell you how we can fix it. About three years ago, I was at a head of schools training. And the workshop leader brought out a guy called Sean. Sean was a dazzling, tall, high school dropout. Shock of curly red hair. Employing hundreds of people very successful entrepreneur. And Sean told us his story. He explained how he'd built up his business, how he'd become so successful. We asked him, what did you learn at school that helped you become a great entrepreneur? And he thought for a while and said, break time. What? Break time? Yeah, break time. Because that's when I can talk to friends. That's when I can create my network. Break is when we live, when we breathe. The rest of the time I was, I was sitting in a, in a classroom, taking notes, keeping quiet, sitting still, listening. Wow, break time. I asked Sean a question. I said, Sean, what advice do you have for me as a head of school? What should I be doing? He looked at me and said, you need to meet every single one of your students for about 10 minutes just to find out who they are and what their goals are. I thought about it. I went back to school and I decided to start meeting my students. And to this day, that's what I do. I meet every student, 10 minutes each. I've got 800 students, that's over 133 hours of meetings. But it's worth it because you learn so much. If someone goes through school from primary all the way up to the end of secondary, that's about 30,000 hours. Now think about it, when you were at school, how many adults, how many teachers or heads sat down with you and said, who are you? What is your dream? That's the first big problem in schools. We're not talking about life, about the big picture. It's all about tests. It's about assignments. It's about deadlines. I started with the senior students, the ones about to graduate. And I asked how things were, and the first word that came out of most students' mouth was stress. Stress around deadlines, stress around exams. The second big word was workload. Too much to do, not enough time. Juggling all of these different assignments, stress and deadlines. Now, a 2014 study run by the APA showed that high school students are more stressed than adults. Is that the kind of school we want? A school where students are more stressed than adults? There's something wrong there. The next question I asked was, what is your goal? What is your dream? What makes your heart sing? So many students told me that they, they had things they loved, but they couldn't do them anymore. DJing, YouTubing, playing in a band, cooking, high-level athletics, following an instrument that wasn't on the school curriculum. They had to stop because there wasn't enough time. In fact, they dropped the things they loved because school wasn't letting them follow them. Think of primary school. Students are free, they play, their mind wanders. But as they get older, they get into the straitjacket that belts them up, slowly but surely, till all they're doing is preparing for exams, preparing for tests, taking notes. We've created a system that drowns out so much creativity and passion. So much of what students want to do they can't do anymore 
because of the way that we've designed high school. And what this has done is it's made many people turn away from school. Look at Einstein. Einstein wasn't bad at maths when he was at school. He was terrific at maths. No, he dropped out of school because he found that the teaching was so narrow-minded and uninspirational that he just couldn't cope anymore. So many brilliant minds were either bad at school, dropped out of school, or expelled from school. People like Winston Churchill, like Richard Branson, like Steve Jobs, the poet Shelley, or the author Edgar Allan Poe, artists like Rihanna, like Nicole Kidman, like Jennifer Lawrence, who left school at 14. All these brilliant, successful people, they left school. So guess what? For you at Sciences Po, following a highly academic program, it's not too late to be successful. You just need to get out. If you drop out of school, you've got a chance. Now that's a joke. But you know what? This isn't a joking matter. This is serious. Because when gifted people can no longer thrive, they don't only turn away from school, they turn away from society. Because the message we're sending them is, this is not your place. Your star cannot shine here. It has to pulse somewhere else. We have to do something about this. And I'm going to share with you three steps that I'm taking at my school and I want you to take with me. Redesign, empower, spread. First, redesign. Redesign the high school transcript. That's this piece of paper that students present to universities. That's the piece of paper that's going to get you a job one day. And it starts with those grades. That's all it contains, grades. The beauty of life is resumed in these numbers and symbols. We have to have a transcript that tells more of a story. What am I good at? Who am I? What makes my heart sing? Reforming the credit system means looking at life-worthy competences. Things like your self-agency. Things like your lifelong learning. Things like how well you interact with other people. And it means coding all the different activities that you're doing in and out of school and making them feature there. So we're celebrating these things. We've started redesigning our high school transcript. That's step one. Step two is to empower empower young people to take ownership of the learning process so that they can add to these credit areas all the things that they're good at, all the things they love, all the stories that they don't get to tell at school. And what we have to do is make sure that our credit system is inclusive enough to let students express themselves through it so that they can design the transcript like a CV. Third, Spread the word. Earlier this year, I pulled together a group of schools from across the world because we all want the same thing, which is a high school transcript that's more inclusive, that's more holistic, that's more dynamic. And now we're looking for universities to join us because they need to be part of the story. They need to help us. Will you join us? Spreading the word is not just about going to universities. It's about going to industry too. Because if we can create a more inclusive university admission system, we can create a more inclusive jobs admission environment. We we're no longer just looking for people who fit in a box, but we want to know who you are, what you're good at, and how you can help us be more diverse, be more creative, be better. Imagine a world like that. This is not just a project to change high school transcripts. This is a project to change the world. To make the world a place where every star can shine. To make the world a place where we believe in human flourishing. To make the world a place where we're interested in learning wherever it's happened. Not just in some places, according to some criteria. Schools of the future have to start now. There have to be places where we can spread our wings and fly.